Hello everyone, welcome to SIUK India webinar. Thank you for joining us today. We are now live with the University of Dundee. Today we have uh, Bill Russell and James Robertson uh, who will let us know more about this special webinar session. Over to you, Bill. Thanks, Topeka. Listen, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Bill Russell. I'm the Associate Dean International at the School of Business in the University of Dundee. Uh, James uh, uh, helps with um, uh, admissions and um, arranging and answering your questions as well as we go along. Um, so what are we going to just talk about are the undergraduate and master's programs that we have here at the School of Business. And we're going to focus, um, make a strong focus on employability as, as we go along. The first thing though, is to be able to um, just tell you where Dundee is. Um, here's the United Kingdom. So the United Kingdom is England, Wales over here, Scotland up the top and Northern Ireland. So it's the United Kingdom of, of all of those areas. Um, and Dundee is in Scotland. Um, Topeka, are people able to see my arrow when I'm moving it around? Uh, yes, we can see your arrow. You can see the arrow. Okay, that's good. So I can at least be pointing. So Dundee's up here in, um, uh, in Scotland. So all of you probably know London. So that's the capital of the United Kingdom. Uh, it's about 12 million people. If you go to um, Birmingham, uh, just up here, this is about three and a half million. If you go to Manchester, about one and a half million people. If you go up to here, it's just the border with Scotland. Edinburgh is the capital of Scotland. Uh, it's about three quarters of a million. Glasgow is a bit bigger, about one and a quarter million. And if you fly into the United Kingdom to come to Dundee, you'll fly in to Edinburgh or Glasgow, either via London or Paris or Dubai or uh, Schiphol. Uh, they all have international connections. And then you get from Glasgow and Edinburgh just to Dundee, and it's about an hour, hour and a quarter uh, in a bus or, um, or by train or by car. And Dundee's on the north side of this little estuary here, which is the Tay Estuary. So it's quite a pretty um, uh, lookout over the water. Dundee's about 150,000 people. So this is quite a small town, possibly compared to the sorts of places that you come from. Um, and the 150,000 people, the three biggest employers are the University of Dundee, uh, Abertay University, which is a smaller university, and then Nine Wells Hospital, which is the hospital of all of the northern part of Scotland, the major hospital. And it's also a teaching hospital, which is part of the University of Dundee as well. Um, there's a mountain range down the centre here. So on the east coast, it tends to be drier because the weather's coming off the Atlantic. Uh, on the west coast, it's wetter. Uh, not very cold in the winter, gets down to around about zero. Sometimes there's a little bit of snow uh, doesn't last for very long. Uh, but when there is snow in Dundee, it means that there's snow up in the highlands, which are here, and the students make good use of that to, um, to go skiing. They just go skiing for the day, hire a car, drive up, go skiing, and then come back. Um, quite a pleasant, um, uh, moderate climate here in Dundee. So School of Business, relatively new. Um, the disciplines have been around for a long time, since the 1920s, but we came together as a business school about seven years ago. Uh, since that time, we've been growing very, very quickly. Uh, the master's programs have been growing at about 30, 35% a year for, um, uh, for six, seven years. Uh, people ask us why, and uh, one of the really important reasons is the focus on teaching. Uh, this is research-led teaching so that they're up to date. But research-led teaching also means something different. It means that the lecturers are very enthusiastic about their subject. They get up in the morning and they say, you little ripper, I'm off to do economics. I'm off to do management. I'm off to do marketing, whatever it is, whatever their research topic is. And that means that that level of enthusiasm comes into the lecture theater. They want to convince you that their topic is the most interesting in the world. And so research led has two sides to it. One is the enthusiasm, which comes from the lecturers. The other one is the, um, uh, the being up to date with the latest knowledge of the area as well. Um, we'll come back to this later on, 
uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about the popularity of the, of the business school. You're all interested in employability. Uh, there's a lot of support and help that we um, provide to all students uh, while you are a student or after you uh, uh, graduate. Um, the careers office has always been very well um, resourced, highly resourced in the university. Um, students make very good use of the careers office right from day one. There's uh, two careers offices which are embedded in the School of Business. We're very fortunate in that way. And these careers offices have a very close relationship with all of the students. Uh, they are able to provide uh, background. Um, they're able to help you in searching for jobs, in preparing for the jobs, your CV, uh, preparing for the interviews, things like that. A number of our programs have internships and we'll point those out as we go along. These internships are funded by the School of Business and, and are eight weeks long. Uh, and they are in China, Vietnam, uh, Mexico, or in the UK, they're uh, here in Manchester, well, not here in Manchester, in Manchester. Uh, we have a lot of engagement with the uh, professionals in industry. So we have a distinguished lecture series. We invite people in to um, talk these these talks are embedded into the curriculum. They're embedded into the, um, uh, the lecture series. And so they are relevant to what you're learning in the, in the, on the courses. Uh, a number of the programs are accredited uh, and they're accredited so, um, uh, so as to be a signal to your employers. The alumni office is very active. We, um, we keep track of um, or keep in touch with our graduates and, we, and they make use of us not only to uh, to meet other graduates, but also to be able to um, uh, uh, search for employment in different parts of the world. Uh, and societies, we have three uh, societies within the School of Business, uh, student societies. One is the Dundee University Business Society, uh, and they're very active and support the students uh, and their well-being. But they also have uh, speakers that come in and talk to the students. There's the um, investment um, uh, society, which is about portfolio investment and, and they arrange a series of talks and workshops by people who are uh, engaged in portfolio management. And there's a marketing uh, society as well. And that is for um, marketing consultants and the likes who come in and talk to the students as well. So we're very keen on the employability side of your experience, not only at Dundee, but of the, of the programs themselves as we go along. Um, let's talk a little bit about the degrees themselves. Uh, so we have a range of master's degrees and we split our master's degrees up into two types. We call one group conversion degrees and the other group extension degrees. So the conversion degrees, you can come with any, any undergraduate background at all. So about 40% of the students will have a, a business undergraduate degree. About 40% will have a non-business but technical undergraduate degree. So these are engineers, statistics, mathematics, uh, science, as, uh, like chemistry and physics and the like. And then the last 20% will have a non-business, non-technical background. And so these people might, these students might have a history background, a politics background, theology, music even. We had a very successful student just recently who um, uh, came with a first in music uh, and they were on the management program. They won a, a prize for their dissertation and they also won a prize for coming um, uh, top in uh, management as well. So these are, these conversion degrees are really changing the direction of your career prospects. So um, if you have a non-business background, so maybe engineering or history or the like, then you've got a brain the size of a large planet, but it's very hard to indicate to employers that you've got understanding about business and you've got interest in business. And so you take your background move it towards business and you do one of these conversion master's degrees. And we'll, we'll show you what they are and in what areas they are. Um, a lot of the best economists and business people that I've met in the past are people who didn't have a business undergraduate degree. They came um, from a different area. They brought different skills and different way of thinking um, to problems when they became business people. There, are, there is this group of people who are, have got a business background and they split up into two groups. 
One group of you know, people who didn't do quite as well as they should have when they were undergraduates. Uh, and what they want to do is they want to reinvent themselves and come back out as a master's student with a distinction or a merit, that you are really showing who you are um, if you sort of underachieved when you did your undergraduate business degree. The other group of people with business degrees are people who might have a, a very broad business degree like business administration. And what they're doing is they're trying to focus it in on finance or focus it in on um, marketing or management or, or whatever. And so they're changing their direction slightly from being a very broad outlook in their undergraduate program uh, to being something more specialist. Um, there are six degree groups, and we'll show you those shortly, and they all have pathways or specialisms. And the reason why we do these pathways is that it's a signal to your employer. So if you're doing international business with finance, you're signaling very strongly to your employer that you have an international business outlook, but you are specifically focusing on finance. You have a very strong um, uh, set of skills in finance. If you are doing the MSc management with marketing and marketing, then again, you have an overview, which is management, but you have a specific set of skills which are related to marketing. It's a very strong signal to your employer, these pathways. All of the conversion degrees have an eight week internship and I'll come back and talk a little bit about them. And they have core modules and then they have uh, modules which define the pathway. So if you're on the MSc International Business Program, there are four core modules uh, plus a, a, a project and that defines international business across all of the pathways. And then if you go on to the finance pathway, then there will be some compulsory modules from finance and there will be some optional modules for finance. If you go on to the marketing pathway, there will be some compulsory modules for finance and, and some optional modules as well. Another thing about these conversion degrees is that they're built properly for being a conversion degree. So what we've done is that we've taken the dissertation and made that smaller. So it's only equal to one module. Um, and we've done that because employers tell us that they would prefer to have a focused business report rather than a very large discursive uh, dissertation. But more importantly, by making the, the dissertation a project, it's allowed us to have eight modules, eight taught modules, which are teaching you skills and understanding. And those eight modules um, are necessary. If you come with an engineering background or a history background, then you need eight modules to fully understand what's going on uh, so as to be able to write the project. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about the extension degrees and how they're structured as we go along. But let's first just talk about the different groups, MSc International Business, MSc International Marketing, MSc Management, Islamic Finance, and MFIN International Finance, and the MSc International Banking and Finance. Each of these have pathways, and we'll show you them just shortly. And the pathways, um, as I say, are a signal to your employer as you go forward. International banking and finance um, is accredited by the Chartered Banker Institute. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we talk about the program. So the MSc management, um, equal largest program in terms of student numbers in the, in the school. Um, management, management entrepreneurship, management and finance, very popular. International human resources, again, very popular. Uh, management and marketing, very popular as well. Those would be the largest um, pathways on this MSc management program. MSc international marketing is the third biggest program in the, in the, um, in the, uh, the school. Uh, the two largest pathways are MSc international marketing and branding and MSc digital social media marketing. In fact, the MSc Digital Social Media Marketing is the largest pathway across the whole of the school. So it's got the largest number of students on it. The international business is equal um, largest in terms of student numbers. It also has the most pathways, partly because international business is such a strong generic brand around the world that um, people understand what it means to be on an international business program. And then we have all of the pathways so as to be signals to your employers. Um, traditionally, the largest pathways are international business and finance, international business, human resource management and marketing, 
and the MSC uh, International Business and Marketing would be the largest ones. But the other pro pathways um, are large as well. Uh, recently, international business just by itself has also been uh, a very popular pathway um, on this program. The MSC International Banking and Finance, this is a, a Chartered Banker Institute has um, uh, accredited that. Uh, the Chartered Banker Institute is the only institution which can um, award chartered banker status to, um, to professionals. So this is the, um, the main uh, professional qualification in banking around the world. Uh, and it's only able to be offered by the Chartered Banker Institute. Uh, if you do the MSC International Banking and Finance, uh, MSC International Banking, MSC International Banking Finance Risk and Regulation, then you get full chartered banker status. So there you put your, the initials after your name, uh, but you also have chartered banker on your, your, on your, um, uh, your business card. If you do the international banking, finance and investment management, then you become an associate chartered banker. Uh, and with the addition of another one or two papers, then you can become a chartered banker as well. MFIN International Finance, um, this is uh, the most flexible of all of our finance programs. Uh, the base program, MFIN International Finance, has all of the finance modules. And what you're doing is um, uh, are just choosing the structure that you want to suit your own career. If you're doing one of the other two, then there will be compulsory uh, modules and optional modules as well. Uh, Islamic finance is the last one. This is taught in partnership with Al Maktoum College, which is about five minutes away from the edge of the of the um, of the uh, of the campus. Uh, in fact, when you're standing on the campus, you can actually see Islamic um, at the Al Maktoum College just down the road. It has three pathways: Islamic finance is the base. Islamic Banking and Finance, Islamic Banking, Finance, International Business. Now, we haven't said anything about scholarships, uh, but later when we do mention scholarships, there are uh, two main scholarships available, which are 5,000 pounds off the value of your international fee. These are the Global Excellence Scholarships and the Global um, Excellence Scholarships, Global Citizenship, <laughs> Citizenship Scholarship as well. Um, and they're worth 5,000 each. If you are on the Islamic finance program, any of these three pathways, and you are awarded uh, one of the university 5,000 pound scholarships, then Al Maktoum also will award you automatically the living support scholarship, which is 10, 500 pounds per month payments uh, of equal to 5,000 pounds to help with living expenses while you're in Dundee. So this is just for the Islamic finance program. Uh, and is uh, offered by Al Maktoum College, who is our partner in delivering this program. The, all, of the inter, all of the conversion degrees have a global internship. This is eight weeks internship. It's open to all of the, um, these students. Uh, China, Vietnam, Mexico, Manchester, as I say. Um, it's organized by uh, Pagoda Projects, which really is a very special um, firm. They do all of the pre-departure work they uh, counsel you, they um, set you up so that you understand what you need to do once you arrive in the country. Uh, once you're in country, they have uh, set it up so that you're all in the same town. Now, uh, in China, it's Chengdu, uh, Mang uh, uh, Vietnam, it's Hanoi. But the interesting thing is that by having everybody in the same town, it means that you can provide a support network for each other, but it also allows um, uh, Pagoda projects to bring you all together so as to be able to run um, uh, workshops on cultural um, uh, identity, cultural uh, understanding, and also meeting local business people. So you come together to network with the local business people who are able to talk to you about what it's like doing business in that country, but also what's it like to trade uh, in and out of the country as well. So a huge um, benefit to the students. Um, Pagoda Projects also provide the accommodation, uh, well, the, the, they organise the accommodation uh, and they are there if there is any need for any emergencies. Um, the School of Business pays for the internship and the accommodation. The students have to pay for the travel to the um, um, internship plus the um, living expenses while you're there. Um, the extension degrees, 
are slightly different. So the extension degrees require some background in the subject matter. So to get onto the MSc finance program, you need to have um, a finance or economics undergraduate degree or a business degree with a lot of finance in it. To get onto the international business and finance program, saying you need to have an accounting finance undergraduate degree, or you need to have a business degree, which has got a lot of accounting and finance to get onto the program. Um, we'll talk a little bit about professional accounting uh, just shortly because it's slightly different. So on these two extension degrees, um, you arrive already on knowing something about the um, subject matter. And so the structure of these programs is different. The structure is a more a traditional uh, structure where you will do four modules which are um, advanced um, in, in the subject. So you do, if you're coming onto the MSc Finance, there'll be four advanced modules in, in finance. And then you will do um, uh, uh, quantitative methods or econometrics. You will do uh, research methods, and then you will do a larger dissertation. Now that structure works because you have arrived with some knowledge. To be able to do this dissertation, uh, you will have the four advanced modules in, in finance, but you will also have the finance knowledge when you arrive. If you arrived with an engineering degree, then there is not enough time to be able to teach you something meaningful with those four modules before you do the, uh, the dissertation. So the structure is different and the structure reflects the fact that you arrived with some knowledge of um, finance or accounting and finance. The professional accountancy degree is similar. You have to have an accounting undergraduate degree or a business degree with a lot of accounting, and I would say a lot of accounting on it, to be able to get onto the professional accountancy degree. It's fully accredited with ACCA. And so it has um, the nine paper exemptions, the understanding and skills paper uh, exemptions. And this program is set up for people really who have an accounting undergraduate degree, which is not accredited. So if you have an accounting undergraduate degree, you already know a lot of accounting and it's not accredited, then in one year you can get a MSc professional accountancy uh, degree, a master's degree, plus you get the nine paper exemptions as you go along. MSc finance has got three paper exemptions with ACCA and the MSc international accounting and finance has four paper um, exemptions. The programs uh, have pathways, the finance and the international accounting and finance have pathways for exactly the same reasons. These are signals to your employer about your strengths as you go forward. English language, 6.0 overall on IELTS, 5.5 um, minimum on each of the components. There is a pre-sessional English language course, um, six weeks course, 11 weeks course, or a 14 weeks course. Um, there's, uh, because of COVID, there's opportunities for face-to-face -face and also online options as well. And then when you have uh, joined us, there is a specialist management English for business module, which is run, uh, it's run each semester for 10 weeks. Now, what's clever about this is that this is a really positive signal to your employer. So it's credit bearing. So it's in your, um, it's in, on your CV or on your transcript. Um, and it's a signal that you understand the world uh, language, which is in business language, which is English, uh, and it's aimed at um, the students uh, to support them. The other side, the other issue, the other angle of this um, module is that the coursework on the module is the coursework from your core modules that you are doing on the program. So if you're doing MSc uh, management, it's got four core modules and it's got coursework in those core modules. And that coursework is what you do on the specialist management English for business module. The nice thing about that is that it means that there's no extra work for you to do. What this is doing is it can't answer the questions for you, but it does allow you to show in your work how absolutely clever you are, what knowledge you do have as you're going forward. Incredibly success, um, successful, this module. Uh, the first year we ran it, I thought there were 90 students that should have uh, signed up for it, 82 students signed up. And at the end of the semester, there were still 75 students on it. So very successful uh, module for the students. The undergraduate degrees, um, we have eight undergraduate degrees. Seven of them um, have a January start and a September start. So 
The seven are the uh, BSC Economics, BSC International Business, BSC Financial Economics, uh, BSC Business Economics with Marketing, BSC Management, BSC Finance, BI Fin International Finance. Now, um, these all have a September intake and they have a January intake as well. There is also a BAC uh, Accountancy, which is um, only has a September intake for, because of accreditation. These programs um, are four-year honours degrees. Uh, if you come in January, then it's three and a half years rather than four years, and we'll mention that just shortly. Uh, but these are four years degrees uh, uh, in, the, in the traditional um, sense of um, uh, the Scottish education system. All of the ones at the top have an MA uh, version as well. And the difference between BSc and MA is that Master of Arts, it's just an undergraduate degree. It's not a, a, a master's, proper master's degree but it's called a Masters of Arts, but the optional modules come from the humanities arts uh, uh, subjects. If you're doing a BSc, then the optional modules uh, come from the science subjects or they come from uh, like maths or statistics, uh, but they also come out of the business um, uh, uh, school as well. Um, final one is the MAC in accounting. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. This is an integrated accounting um, undergraduate and master's degree. And we'll show you what the structure is in, in this shortly, but it's only has a January intake. For these other programs, which have a January intake, three major benefits. Firstly, it's a three and a half years honors degree. So in the first three module, three semesters, you do one extra uh, module each semester, which isn't difficult. And then when you get to years three and four, where the program is actually uh, awarded, then you will be at exactly the same place as somebody who started in September and was doing it over four years. In the first year, you do half fees, uh, and then you pay full fees from years two to four onwards. And there's also an opportunity to swap over to what we call the in-practice degrees, uh, and we'll give you a list of those shortly, uh, in year three, which has the funded internship in the summer of year three, is also the internship is the uh, subject of the project. Um, so these, the nice thing about these uh, three and a half year January start degrees is that you, you don't have to settle to go to Australia and New Zealand. You can come to the United Kingdom and come to a, a top university here in the UK. Um, and it's a three and a half honours uh, year honours degree, unlike in Australia and New Zealand, which are four year honours degrees as it goes forward. So um, if you're thinking of January start, then think of, of Dundee. These degrees also, they haven't been put together just for COVID. They've been there from before COVID. They were there, they're established um, entry points for um, our honours degrees. The AMAC Integrated Masters Program is three years long and you get an under, um, uh, it's an integrated bachelor's degree and master's degree. Um, it's fully accredited with uh, ACCA, so nine paper exemptions. And if you leave after two years, you're awarded a BSc in accounting, which is fully accredited. If you stay for the third year, then you get a master's uh, in accounting and you are what we call paper ready um, for two of the papers, two of the professional papers as well. So you do a dissertation, but you also have these, um, uh, uh, what am I saying? You also have, um, being prepared for two of the professional papers. So you can't do the professional papers with um, University of Dundee. You have to do the professional papers with ACCA uh, and you will be ready to do those once you've finished the third year. Finally, in the undergraduate space are the in-practice degrees, applied finance, economics, business management, international business in practice. These are all professional focused and applied. Uh, and importantly, they include the eight week internship. And the eight week internship is the same as the one that I talked about uh, for the master's programs. You're, you are put into firms uh, in an area which is relevant for your degree uh, and you under, come to an understanding of the, of the firm and the culture and the environment um, during that eight weeks. Um, English language requirements uh, for the undergraduate degrees, not for the MAC. Uh, the MAC has a slightly higher one. And I, James, maybe you could put into the 
chat box what the English language requirements are for the MAC. But for all of the other undergraduate programs, it's 6.0, 5.5 on each of the components, excepting writing where you have to have 6.0. And just like before, there's the pre-sessional English language and the in-sessional English language programs as well. Fees and scholarships, uh, 18,000 for this year, 18,950 tuition fee. The Global Excellence Scholarship is £5,000 awarded on academic merit, and it's automatically awarded when you apply. Global Citizenship Scholarship, £5,000 awarded uh, uh, for a range of reasons, but aligned with UOD values. And there's also the Automatic South Asia Scholarship uh, because of COVID and supporting people during this period of £5,000, which is awarded automatically if you're from the South Asia region. If you get any of these, um, as I said, any of these scholarships, then you're automatically, and you're on the MSc in Islamic Finance Program, you're automatically awarded the Al McToom Living Award uh, Scholarship of 5,000 pounds, paid as five, 10 times 500 pounds per month payments to help you with your living expenses. Um, if you don't quite meet the uh, entry requirements for uh, any of these programs, then there are uh, pathways through International College Dundee. They work very closely with the School of Business. Uh, they're actually next to the campus or actually on the campus. Um, and you are a University of Dundee student right from the beginning. There's a joint CAS arrangement so that you don't have uh, difficulties with uh, UKVI. Uh, and then you're able to um, uh, go on to the business undergraduate degrees, uh, either with the um, from the foundation programs, or you can go on to the um, uh, master's programs uh, with the pre-master's programs. The pre-master's programs, one in ter two terms long. Uh, there's also an online version, uh, and then the undergraduate programs pathways uh, onto business programs are uh, one year long to cover year one, or in some cases to cover year two to go on to the uh, in practice degrees as well. I want to just finish by uh, saying about the rankings of the university. Uh, the university is always ranked highly. Uh, the one which I'm always impressed by is the student experience. Whenever uh, student experience uh, rankings come out in any area, we are always ranked at the top or one or two in, in Scotland or the top few in Australia, in, Australia, in the United Kingdom. Um, people ask me why. I've already said slightly partly why, and that's because of the research focus and our emphasis on teaching. Um, I think the second reason is that it's a very compact campus. Uh, the accommodation, if you're living on in university accommodation, it's either on the campus or right next to it. Uh, people don't bother to buy cars. Uh, they don't even buy bicycles. They just walk to and from the campus and into the city. It's right next to the city, so it's only about five minutes walk to the bus station or to the um, a train station if you want to go further away, uh, but there's the city itself, so as to provide all, the, all, all of what you need in the city. Um, if you don't live in the university accommodation, then uh, people live very close by in West End and just over the road, uh, nearly everybody just walks to, to the university. So it's very compact. It's got a very nice community um, feel. It's a lovely little town. You're looking out over, um, over, the, over the Tay, which is um, the second biggest river by flow of water in the, in the United Kingdom. Uh, so it's a very uh, pleasant environment as, you, as you're going along. The third reason is that the Student Union, DUSA, Dundee University Students Association, the Student Union is very well managed, has been for the 25 years that I've been here. Most universities have good years and bad years when it comes to their um, uh, student union, but the university seems to have done exceptionally well um, with their um, of running the, the, uh, the union. The student union is responsible for the um, uh, clubs and societies. It runs them well. It runs the on-campus um, cafes and um, shops. Uh, but most importantly for us is that they run the feedback at the module level, at the uh, program level, at the school level, and at the university. And that feedback is gold, gold dust for us. Um, it's nice to have people say nice things about you, but that's not what's really important in feedback. It's when they're saying things are not going quite right, how they can be improved. 
Uh, and that feedback is just incredibly important to make sure that we are right uh, on changing things in real time so as to uh, support the students. Uh, during COVID, that's been incredibly important. Uh, during COVID, um, we had to make a lot of changes. We had to make them very quickly. And the feedback from the students was incredibly important to make sure that we got that right as we go forward. <coughs> Sorry about that. So I think that's a good place to stop. Um, we can take some questions. I guess I want to start finish by just saying everybody is probably aware of the graduate route. Um, that's uh, something which doesn't guarantee uh, employment in the UK, but it does allow you to apply for uh, staying on in the UK afterwards, after you graduate. Um, the university uh, wants to always help you in all things to do with career. And so there is the, um, the careers office there to help you find a proper graduate uh, employment when you, when you finish and you want to stay on. Um, there's also a lot of other advice, which can be about how to go about the process. We can't apply for you, of course, uh, we can't be your agent in, in, that, in that respect, but uh, we can give you background information to support you uh, as you go along. But overall, the most important thing is the education, uh, and that's what we focus on as we go along. Um, where are we now? Uh, here we go. Shall I just stop sharing? And I've come back. Topeka, um, is this a good place to stop and to take some questions from the students or from, yes. the, from the people yeah. in the audience? Yes, Bill. Thank you so much for such a knowledgeable presentation. Now we are moving towards the Q&A session. So we have quite a few questions on our YouTube, our YouTube channel. Uh, the student want to ask, uh, the first question I'm taking in, Bill. Yeah. The, yeah, the student want to ask, sir, can you help me to get a scholarship like what are the specific scholarships for MA courses? I think you have already covered this. Do you want to I've add- i covered to that. The only thing I would add on top of that. So there, there are the scholarships which are available from the Uni University of Dundee. Uh, and James can put into the chat box the, uh, the link which takes you to the scholarship page. So you can search for particular scholarships. But if you are looking for funding, uh, it sounds very easy just to go to a large institution and ask or a large scholarship provider and ask for a scholarship and that is one thing that you should do you might be successful but they're incredibly competitive there's huge number of people who apply for those and what I do find is that if people break it up into small you go to your your local community group you go to local firms you go and you don't ask for all of it you ask just for a thousand pounds or a smaller amount um, it's messier, you have to do it in lots of little bites, but it does get you the funds that you might want. And then you make sure that when you're going through your studies, you write back to them. You have a system of writing back to them every semester, every year, and just say, listen, this is what I've done this year. Thank you very much for your contribution as you go forward. So I guess there's three ways. There's scholarships from the universities. There's the big scholarship providers around the world, which are very competitive. You must uh, try those as well. But then at the same time, try the local community, you charge just any local groups, local um, and family and extended family and firms and things like that. But don't ask for everything. Ask just for uh, a contribution uh, and then go forward. It is, it is very difficult. And I'm sorry, I, I would love to be able to support everybody, but unfortunately we can't. Thank you, Bill. The next question. Uh, the student is asking, can I apply for international marketing and branding MSc without work experience after completing my bachelor's in journalism? Yes, absolutely. That's, ex that's an excellent question. So you've come with journalism, you've got a, you're going to be very good in the written space. If you come into uh, international marketing, you will bring all of those skills and the program is set up just for that. You don't have to have work experience you come from any background that you like. So yes, absolutely yes. Thank you, Bill. The next question, what is the average salary for an international relations MA course graduate? Is a two year uh, of work, uh, post-study work visa uh, still available? 
The, well, the graduate route work visa is available. Uh, students can apply for that as they graduate. Um, it, that's something separate from the university, of course. That's uh, managed by the uh, UKVI, UK uh, Visa and Immigrations. Um, so that is available. Um, I'm not quite sure. He asked what sort of salary yeah, that you would have. Yeah, 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 he asked about what is the average salary for an uh, international relation MA course graduate? Um, I'm not sure. We don't do international relations in the School of Business, but most graduate starting salaries are around about, um, well, James, help me here, 25,000 or so for a graduate position, if you're doing a graduate position, but we don't have international relations. Okay, thank you, Bill. The next question, what are the five uh, top employers of Dundee University? Ah, uh, um, that is a difficult question. So people who graduate from um, the School of Business on these master's programs, they go into small, large um, corporations, both in the UK, uh, and all around the world. A lot of students go uh, back to their own country or they go to third countries, third, um, uh, third countries like they might come from India and go back to Sri Lanka or come from Nigeria uh, and go to um, Pakistan. They, they move around the world. The nice thing about um, business is that it's a very agreed set of principles and they're transferable around the world. So unlike um, well, accounting is becoming more transferable with ACCA, but unlike medicine, dentistry, where you will have to, or law, where you will have to uh, pass exams in the, home, in the home country to get an employment, business goes anywhere. So it's very, uh, they're large, small corporations. People set up their own businesses. Um, it's an incredibly broad spread. Uh, a few years ago, we contacted all of the international business graduates. Uh, the reason why we approached the international business uh, graduates was because they went all the way back to 2004. We had 700 graduates, which we approached, uh, and we had over 100 replies. And the amazing thing was that they were where you expected them to be for the number of years out from uh, graduation. They were in middle or higher management. They were in businesses all around the world. They were... Um, uh, you couldn't judge where they were from what their undergraduate degree was, only from their degree and their pathway. So the conversion degree had done exactly what we intended them to do. It gave them uh, the opportunity to get into middle higher management very quickly um, uh, in businesses all around the world. Thank you, Bill. The next question. Uh, are you hosting career days during studies? Career days during, oh, yes. So, the, uh, yes, uh, the careers office has a, uh, so students who want to make use of the careers office, they sign up to the careers office straight away. And then there is a steady um, a stream of um, uh, careers days and uh, employers coming to the campus or workshops to um, set yourself up so as to be able to gain employment. So, yes, the careers office is very uh, engaged in providing uh, opportunities for employment. Yes. Thank you, Bill. The next question. Um, I'm looking forward in business analyst job role, and I have a PG in data science as well. Is there any possibility to get job in foreign countries as a fresher? I think. Yes. Not, yeah, you mean with that with the masters? That's right. So with the business um, analytics, yeah. that's very useful. If you if you then specialize and focus on a particular area like marketing or finance or something like that, uh, then if you take those two to market, you'll be very employable um, once you graduate. Thanks, Bill. The next question. What is the deadline of January 2021 intake? Uh, this is a clever question. Um, there's no formal deadline. The only real deadline is to be able to organize yourself to be able to start on the first day of term. So because of COVID, we've set up all of the matriculation and that's what we call registering for a program. Uh, we've set all that up online and you can start your learning online. But if you want to actually be here physically, then it's usually about seven weeks before the start of term. So late November would allow you to uh, go through the whole process uh, and be able to arrive. 
However, if you want to start just online and then arrive when it's convenient for you, and we've set it up that way, uh, then you could be much closer to the January start date. But there is no formal closing date uh, uh, other than you need to be able to organize yourself to start at uh, the start of term. Thanks, Bill. The next question, what is the scope of jobs in marketing in the UK? Um, very broad. Uh, the, the range of um, degrees that we have pretty much cover uh, all of the marketing areas. Uh, if you come out with a distinction or, or merit in one of these degrees, then you are really signaling to your employer um, uh, that you're something special in marketing in these areas. Uh, marketing, digital marketing, uh, very sought after uh, and have been for a long time because of the growth of internet and, and digital uh, marketing in general. So it's a very strong employer, uh, both in the UK and around the world. Thanks, Bill. The next question. When, uh, when you can start applying for September 2022 intake? Cool. Um, James, is that already open? I thought that was already open. Or is it just about to open? James is not here, Bill. Oh, I he's not here. Um, I think, uh, uh, give me half a second and I can... Oh, no, if, if they're asking that question, it means it's not on the line. It'll be very shortly. I will even chase that up today about opening... Um, September 22. Okay. That's good. But it'll be very shortly. Okay. Thanks, Bill. The next question. Uh, please tell about the COVID guidelines for Indian students, quarantine and online and offline classes. Ah, okay. So the COVID um, uh, quarantine guidelines seem to change steadily. At the moment, there are quarantines uh, being uh, arranged that you have to spend time uh, quarantined. On the teaching side, um, because everything keep, is changing as we're going along, um, in general, the rules are becoming more relaxed um, and we are maintaining some social distancing just to be safe. Uh, and so that means that the class sizes have to be quite small uh, and that's what we're aiming for. What we've done is um, we have matriculation online. And if you're in, in Dundee, you matriculate online. If you're overseas, you can matriculate online as well. You can register for the programs, choose your modules, choose your pathways and the like. It also allows you, uh, if you are not in Dundee, to be able to access all of the material from the start. And that means um, uh, the material online, so like uh, readings and, and uh, exercises and work and some uh, fixed videos from the lecturer and from other, other people as well. And then it also allows you to do uh, live sessions online as well. And then when you're ready to come to Dundee, then you can come to Dundee. Um, we always recommend that you do come to Dundee. There are benefits of being on campus and the, the cultural experience of being here in, the, in Dundee and in the UK. But we do understand that there are some difficulties in arriving. Uh, there's uh, costs. Uh, sometimes the, the airfares are very expensive at the start of term. Um, but there are difficulties in terms of you might be supporting your family back home. You might be uh, just unable to travel because of travel restrictions and things like that. But we want to set it up in such a way that uh, you can come after two, three, four, five weeks um, uh, and still not have missed anything and get the full experience of uh, doing the program. Um, Topeka, does that answer the question? Yes, uh, yes, Bill, that answers the question very well. So uh, Bill, I've covered all the questions from the ch chat box and uh, thank you so much for answering all the questions so well. And okay. another thing, yeah, and another thing to all the students who are watching this right now, if you have any further queries related to admission or the deadlines, please feel free to contact SIUK India offices. We'll be more than happy to uh, tell you about any kind of difficulties you're facing for the admission process. And I think, yeah, yeah. thanks, Dapika. I, th I think the really important thing is that January is still available for the master's programs, for the MAC, that's the integrated a bachelor and master's in accounting. Uh, they have a January start, only a January start. 
uh, but also the undergraduate programs. If you, if you don't have to wait till the following September, you can come in January for seven out of eight of our undergraduate programs. Uh, and it really doesn't matter whether you start in September or in January, uh, the performance will be the same. So, um, yeah, so it's not just September next year. January is, is very easy to organise, certainly from now um, as, as we go forward. Sorry, Topeka, back to you. Oh. No worries. Uh, so, Bill, uh, I, we are coming towards the end of this session. Do you want to put forward anything for the students who are watching this right now? Um, just to say how important it is, and it is very important about going and getting studying overseas. So it, you might not have picked up, got an Australian accent. Um, by studying overseas and now working overseas, but studying overseas, it allowed me to look back at my country through the eyes of all my friends and acquaintances and, and colleagues and professional people that I met, not just through my own eyes. And it's changed the way that I look at Australia and I changed, changed my way of looking at the world as, as a whole. And I don't think I would have gained that knowledge if I hadn't come and, work, and worked and, and studied outside of the country. I think the second thing is that People who study overseas, it's an amazing signal to your employer. So when I was looking for a PhD, I should have gone to Tokyo. Uh, Japan was the biggest employer, um, biggest exporter at that stage. China is now, but used to be the biggest um, uh, uh, destination of our exports. They were very, very heavily involved in the finance sector. And I was interested in macroeconomics and finance. And if I'd been braver, I would have gone to Japan and, uh, and done the degree there, the PhD there. But I didn't want to do a PhD in Japanese. I wasn't brave enough. And so I went to the United Kingdom instead. But I think if you're going and doing a, um, a degree in a second language, I know English for people in Pakistan and in your region is not that much of a second language, but it is still considered a second language. And going and living in a different culture really is an amazing signal to your employer. It's a, it's a signal that you're a risk taker, that you will take on challenges, that you have overcome them, and you've come back a bigger and better person because of it. So I, I just in awe of all students which go off and do, student, uh, do study overseas. I think it's impressive. If you're doing it in a second language, then I'm even more impressed. I just think you're incredibly um, special in every way. Uh, and you should, if you can do it, then you should try and do it. Um, so I think that's a good place to finish, Topeka. Thanks, Bill, for your kind words today and your valuable time for our students and with SIUK. Uh, so we are ending this session over here. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, my pleasure. Lovely. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Bye now. Bye. Take care.